Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to my studio. As I mentioned previously in this PowerPoint presentation, uh, I've introduced and outlined uh, our next project, which is working on uh, toned charcoal paper, specifically Canton Epianthus paper. It's a wonderful medium to work on, a wonderful piece of paper. I prefer this, the uh, steel gray. You'll want to get a sheet or two of the uh, steel gray. It, it comes in some other neutral grays as well, but I prefer this one. I find it a good medium tone to work against. What I want to do uh, right now is to uh, introduce you the approach of how to work this up and to work up your values slowly. And uh, you can use anything again. I've mentioned in a, previously in the other slides, you can use a glass of water. A glass of water is always a wonderful little model to set up your still life. I've showed you how to set up your still life and shoot it if you'd like. That's always recommended. It makes it a little easier to see the shapes contained within the object that you're drawing and the work up as you slowly develop your image. Again, we're going to be working with our three charcoal pencils that I'm sure you've gotten sharpened up to a fine deadly point if you like them. And in addition, we're going to be using this, a white charcoal pencil. Right. First thing I want to make you aware of about the Canson paper is that it's got two sides that you can use. If you look closely, the name Metientis is imprinted on one side. Now there's two different sides that they give you a different effect. Uh, look very closely at the side where it's printed and you'll see there's a little bit of a texture to it, which will give you a kind of a honeycomb effect. If you lay your pencil over and lay down a real soft feel the color, you'll see this pattern emerge. I prefer to use the smooth side. I just, uh, I, I find this little pattern in the, uh, a little bit distracting. Um, when I pull a camera up close, I'll give you a closer view of what this looks like. But again, I prefer to use the smooth side so I can get a really consistent and wonderful there's a fly terrorizing me right now. Let's get off of my water. So depending on how delicately you push down on your tool, your pencil, as you're working up the value, you can really control it and get a nice, smooth, very consistent gradation of value. I'm sure you've all been learning a little bit about how your pencil works with the uh, self-portrait you've been working on. So anyhow, um, I think any object will serve for your still life. I'll be using specifically this. I'm going to work up a little milk ball I found. There's a bunch of interesting shapes that you see in, in glass, so it's always a great uh, subject matter to work with. For the demonstration purposes today, I'm just going to work with a simple uh, draw a simple sphere. Um, we've already been through that process and we don't understand the use of the laws of light and such. So I'm going to go ahead and work that up very carefully and show you the approach to working with white and dark charcoal on a toned charcoal paper. So at this point, I'm going to Move the camera forward so you get a very close up view. You'll probably only see my hands working. But, uh, my cameraman quit because he said free beer wasn't enough payment for his service. And so bear with me for a moment while I close in. And, uh, well, let me adjust this. So, uh, yeah, I think that will be sufficient. Okay, so again, as with all of our drawings, I always suggest working with a very, very, very light line, and hence I'll use my medium charcoal pencil that leaves the lightest mark. I've already gone in and scribed a little circle here so I can start working on that. Uh, of course, when we're working with a project, we always want to you know, have a light source that we understand, and as we know, 
a sphere is going to cast a shadow, an elliptical shadow shape, and depending on that light source where it's coming from will dictate how long that elliptical shape will be. It'll end right about there. So I've got my cast shadow plotted out. Now I'm going to go in, and of course, we know that there's a light side and a dark side to the sphere. So I'll just use my pencil so lightly again. I want you to work your values up slowly because we can get a general idea of where, in this case, my core shadow occurs. Keeping in mind the laws of light logic and where these shadows start and end. We know that the core shadow is the darkest shadow on an object where it transitions from the light side into the dark side. So I'll go ahead and get that established lightly. I can come all the way down because we know we've got reflected light bouncing off the surface. So I'm going to switch over here to my, what is this one, my extra soft. So this one's going to leave the darkest mark. So I can lightly go in here and very carefully work up what would be the half tone on the back side. Now the object here is to let your paper, the gray of the paper, serve as your middle value. Always kind of try to simplify and think about three values. And this applies even to painting when you can. The simpler we make our paintings, the easier they read, they're less complicated, and they're usually a lot fresher looking and not overworked. But again, I'm kind of working this up very, very slowly. Coming down here, keeping in mind that I'm eventually going to get down to an area that's going to have some reflected light along the bottom of that sphere. Which I will probably just let the gray of the paper serve as that value itself. Now I'm going to grab my soft pencil. It's not quite as dark a mark. Give myself my little half tone and quarter tone as well. I'm going to leave a little bit of the gray of the paper. One thing that you want to avoid is, oh, I want to show you the difference when I work close up, the difference between one side from the other. You can see this pattern that emerges on the back side of the uh, canson, as opposed to nice smooth surface that you can get. I prefer this surface to work from. So I'm going to ooh, go to my white charcoal pencil. Everybody's always seduced by these when we get our start class people want to just eager to start using this white charcoal pencil it's so seductive let me warn you it doesn't take a whole lot to start getting the effect of the white charcoal so again work slowly don't uh, don't get eager and start leaning on that white too hard at first we can always bring it up later if we want to punch up a highlight. Another thing that you want to avoid, and this is important, keep this in mind, with this process, you want to avoid mixing the white charcoal with the dark charcoal. It gets kind of muddy looking. So whenever you're going to have a transition from your light into the dark side, make sure that you just taper off with your white, let it kind of dissolve out leave a gray area and then kind of start working up your dark side very very lightly as it transitions into a darker value. So I'm going to go ahead and very carefully just define the light side of this sphere. The light light glaze of white charcoal.
control, you guys. When we're learning to draw initially and learning the foundations of drawing, we want to develop a sense of control to, you know, learn how to use the medium to our advantage and our understanding of how learn the characteristics of the different mediums and how we best utilize those to our advantage. Okay, I'm getting pretty close to where I had laid in a very light quarter tone with my dark charcoal. So I'm going to start backing off and leaving some of the gray of the paper in this area while I start reintroducing my darks. Slowly come up here a little half tone slipping into that dark, dark core shadow. Let me go ahead and bump that up. Notice how I'm holding the pencil, you guys. This is, um, I like to think of a pencil sort of as a paintbrush, laying down strokes rather than holding it and leaning on it like we, uh, you know, we're so used to holding a writing tool and a pencil in a certain fashion, but we're creating art and we hold our tools completely differently. So we're going to just... I maybe continue to work up these values further as I go into the further along refining this drawing. You can see little areas where your pencil will skip. You can very carefully fill those in. I want to kind of lean on working with my soft pencil as opposed to the extra soft. probably go back in with my extra soft and bump up that core shadow here once I get this to a level that I'm satisfied with. I've got that reflected light down here along the bottom edge of that sphere so I don't want to uh, and be careful not to trespass into that area yet. I think I'm going to go ahead and add some value to the cast shadow right now so I can have that to uh, contrast it again. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my extra soft again so I can get a nice dark, dark value right underneath the object where it comes in contact with the surface that it sits on. You'll recall that it's always darkest right there underneath the actual object. And then as it extends away from the object, it will I'm getting a little bit lumpy with my And then as it extends away into the ambient light of the environment that it's in, that shadow will lighten. And make sure, you know, we kind of identify the shadows. You've probably heard me say it a bunch of times, but learning to draw is learning to see, learning to identify shapes, and then developing your control of your eye-hand coordination to drawing those shapes defining them and carefully fill in that shadow shape and then leaving it a little bit lighter out at this end where it extends away from the sphere Just 
and rich and dark around the bottom here. Okay, so that gives me an, and some contrast between where I know the reflected light is occurring and then again the half tone of the back side of the sphere. Let me go back to my soft pencil. I can have a little more control. I want to bring that half tone down a little bit and softly transition into that reflected light along the bottom of the sphere. I've said this before while working with these charcoal pencils and even graphite pencils. I just let almost the weight of the pencil tip and the tooth of the paper pull the material off the end of the pencil. So we get probably a little more of a shadow coming around. Give this your sense of roundness up into this quarter tone. And more of a quarter tone up in here. And you go in and punch up that core shadow here in a moment. So I want to make sure that I get a nice transition out of where that core shadow is going to be and into where the gray of the paper will be the middle value transition from the quarter tone into the highlight area. The eyes will become very, very sensitive to this, to the slightest pressure to create that transition. So I'm going back to my extra soft here. I'm going to start emphasizing that core shadow a little bit. Do you notice I'm going to work in a circular motion? I seem to think that that helps distribute the medium a little more easily. A little more control over it. You want to try to get avoid again severe harsh transitions from one value zone into another. I'm able to push a little harder now now that I've got a good build up beginning to happen. Let's sit back and look at that from a little distance. Yeah, I can see so it needs a little tough in here. A little more of a half tone coming into that quarter tone. This is a very popular technique method using this tone charcoal paper with the uh, white and the dark charcoal. I've already showed you some examples of some heads, uh, portraits, and other examples. And as you develop your own hand, and you begin to develop your style, your voice. I call it your voice because we all have our own tendency of how we lay down or how our hand works and how we distribute different media across the papers or the paint canvas if you're working on different brush strokes and stuff. Don't be too concerned that this is oh, I have to I have to develop my style and I have to find my style. That is something that finds you. Believe me, I wrestled with it and everybody I went to art school with wrestled with it and always were kind of nervous. Oh man, what's my style gonna be? 
Well, it emerges after many, many, many hours and many, many practice projects that you do. Uh, I mean, the, so funny, just a little slight, slightest variation can make something look on a sphere can affect the round ball and roundness to it. I need a little correction there, so. I'm going to grab my eraser and see if I can clean up a little. Now, oh, that's getting better. Okay. I think I'm getting there. So. Let me go back to my white charcoal pencil again and start working that up a little bit. Now we know that the light comes down and where the object is closest to that light source is where you're going to have your highlight. So now I'm going to go ahead and just bump up a little bit of a bright spot. So I can lean on this pencil just a little more, but again, I'm doing it very controlled. The thing is with the white charcoal is it can tend to really jump off the paper at you. Now I need to step back and look at this from a distance so I can see, yes, it's beginning to get a little bit too loud. I'm going to soften or just bring up the value surrounding it just a little bit so that highlight doesn't just jump off the surface at me. Lightly go into, but not cross over into where the dark charcoal is. Slowly transition there. So I've got pretty intense white here. It tapers out into what would be kind of a quarter tone into the gray of the paper right in this area. And I start to see a hint of the dark charcoal here, which is my quarter tone again into my half tone. Of course, my core shadow, the half tone around the back side. Maybe I'll throw in just a little bit of white down here in the reflected light. Just for a little pop, maybe to define the edge of the sphere right here, where it's against the gray of the paper. I'm putting very, very, very little material down there, because I don't want it to, again, get too bright. And I don't want to mix into the charcoal that's on there. Let me get my medium again. Now, just add a little more punch to the half tone I've got on this back side. So it can transition a little more smoothly into that reflected light along the bottom side. Okay, let me look a little bit. Okay, I think I can bring a little bit more subtle light into this area without crossing into the black charcoal. Maybe extend that highlight area just a little bit out into this region. Just a little area where I need to get up on my point and fill in a little hole there. So yeah, it's beginning to take shape here. Again, you'll develop your very sensitive eye and feel like where you need to touch it in just little places to make that look like a smooth transition from one into the other. But again, let me warn you, number one rule that you don't want to do is to blend 
white charcoal with dark charcoal. Let me see if I can do a little demonstration down here and show you what happens. It turns into this kind of muddy, ugly, cool gray that uh, almost even clashes with the paper. Let me use my dark charcoal. And So it just doesn't breathe. It doesn't have that fresh quality that we see over here, letting the uh, the paper use its character and its medium, whatever the uh, character of the tooth of the paper is. So again, it just kind of it looks kind of like a blue gray, which kind of clashes with the warmth of the steel gray. So <clears throat> drink the water. Anyhow, I think that. Uh, let me step back and look at it. Maybe a few more minor adjustments here. Get real rich with my core shadow here. Maybe a little bit more of the half tone back here. A little more half tone going out of the shadow into the light side of the sphere. That feels pretty good to me. Let me look at it here. Soften that transition from the reflected light. Very carefully. Again, I'm just going to let the gray of the paper speak. That looks a little bit too harsh to me, that transition of that reflected light. So I'm going to go ahead and soften that into that half tone. There we go, that's getting better. Yes, not good. So I'm going to wrap up here real quick. I want to show you, uh, as I've mentioned with our other projects, I like to put a little bit of a background value around. In the interest of time, I've already cut out a little mask from tracing paper, which I will lay down over here. And tape in place. Um, first thing I want to do is, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do Make sure I got my sphere covered up perfectly. Yes, there we go. Tape that down so it doesn't move. I'll grab my yellow painter's tape here. Low tack tape. Give myself a little border up here. Again, I'm not going to burnish that down really strong. I want to just give this drawing a little bit of a finished background. You don't need to do this. This isn't required. This is something I just like to do, a habit of mine. Kind of give a look of finish to the entire drawing rather than just an exercise of a sphere. Now, again, I'll grab my trusty chamois that we used when we were doing our background on our grid project. I'll get some charcoal and it's also helpful for defining the surface that the sphere is sitting on.
Get some more charcoal worked up here. I can get it on my chamois. See, I've got a little greasy, oily fingerprint in my, on the paper. That, <laughs> I always try to encourage everybody, wash your hands before you start working, because you get these little things like that that really jump out and annoy you. See if I can make that go away with a eraser. Maybe I'll just go ahead and erase in another little line right over the top of where that was yeah that helps so okay i'm gonna carefully pull this tape away on the sides pulling it low and slow away from the image trash can for one so pull that away there's our little sphere I hope this demonstration was helpful and uh, gave you some rules to abide by as far as uh, again watching those transitions I think I look at it the more I huh, a drawings never really done there's always some little adjustments you can go back in to really kind of I'm using my medium pencil my hardest one to just kind of really give it a smooth transition from that light side into that core shadow so there you go that's it um hope you can see that clearly i hope that you were able to see these little demonstrations down here the good smooth side as opposed to the pattern side um, some people enjoy working with that pattern side i've seen some successful drawings on that side but that's going to wrap it up i'm going to go back over to my desk and uh, talk with all of you on zoom at this point so see you over there